Imagine with me that this old man you see as poor committed the most heinous crimes on earth and remained a fugitive for 40 years until he was finally captured in 2018. A wave of great terror swept through California after more than 10 murders, over 20 rapes, and more than 120 robberies occurred, all sharing the same pattern and characteristics. Today, our story is about the Golden State Killer. Joseph James D'Angelo. He was born in 1945 in New York State. His parents separated when he was young and he moved to live with his mother who remarried. He spent most of his childhood and teenage years in the countryside of Sacramento, California. He served for 22 months in the Navy during the Vietnam War. He graduated from California State University, Sacramento in 1971 with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Afterward, he worked as a police officer in several cities near Sacramento County. One of his relatives recalls that at the age of 10, he witnessed his seven-year-old sister being raped by two men in West Germany, where the family was living at the time, which may have contributed to shaping his personality later on. From 1973 to 1976, Joseph worked as a police officer in the burglary unit in Exeter, California. He was later promoted in 1976 to head the burglary unit in a city with a population of around 5,000. Burglaries began specifically in March 1974, and the mysterious thief, dubbed the Visalia Ransacker, would break into homes, vandalize them, and steal items that were not valuable, unlike typical burglars who target valuables. His crimes occurred in neighborhoods near a college. After a series of burglaries that lasted for over 18 months and desperate attempts by the police to apprehend him on September 11, 1975, he broke into the home of a college professor named Claude Snelling. Claude was asleep when he heard a strange noise in his house at two in the morning. He found a masked man trying to abduct his 16-year-old daughter, threatening to kill her if she spoke. The assailant, believed to be Joseph, but not confirmed 100%, shot Claude twice, causing him to pass away hours later. Due to the nature of these crimes, which often targeted homes of high school girls and were mostly near Mitt Whitney High School, and because the majority of the crimes were close to Sequoia's college, the police suspected that the perpetrator might be a student at this college. A list of 37 suspects was compiled, with 21 of them being college students. No one suspected for a moment that the thief who committed more than 120 home burglaries over 18 months was ultimately a police officer in the burglary unit in a city less than 10 miles away. Joseph D'Angelo was not among the 37 suspects. This is an approximate sketch based on the description provided by witnesses who saw part of his features. The ransacker disappeared from sight after his last encounter with two police officers. He vanished after terrorizing Visalia for 22 months, during which there were 120 home burglaries and one murder, along with an attempted abduction of a 16-year-old girl. But the story didn't end there because he reappeared elsewhere. After disappearing from Visalia in late 1975, he resurfaced six months later, about 200 miles north, but this time with more ferocious crimes and a new title, The East Area Rapist. At that time, it was not known that he was the same criminal, and it was assumed he was a different one. The East Area Rapist moniker was given to him after a series of rapes that began in the eastern part of Sacramento County and extended to several villages and small towns for three years. He would roam at night in neighborhoods inhabited by low-income residents carefully selecting his victims. He often targeted women living alone with their homes in semi-open areas that allowed him to escape if discovered. He would also pre-enter homes, leaving a window open and thoroughly study the crime scene to avoid any mistakes. He would also call the homes of his victims before committing the crime, sometimes months in advance, to study their daily routines and know when they were at home. While initially targeting only women, it later evolved, and he preferred attacking couples. His method was sinister. He would sneak into the homes of his victims while they slept, waking them with a flashlight in one hand and a gun in the other. He would instruct the wife to tie up her husband's hands, then cunningly place glass plates on the back of the husband lying on the ground. In this scenario, if the husband moved and the plates fell, his fate and that of his wife would be death, or so he threatened. 
he would then proceed to rape his victim in a nearby room, sometimes for hours on end. He also exhibited bizarre behavior, eating and drinking alcohol in the house before returning to assault his victim again, all while the husband remained bound and under a pile of glass plates, threatened with death if he tried to escape or remove his restraints. The police failed in all attempts to apprehend him. He was clever in evading capture and deliberately left clues to confuse the police. One of his tactics that aided in his evasion was that he wouldn't flee immediately after committing his crime. Instead, he would stay in the house for long periods in complete darkness, leaving his victims unaware of whether he had left or not. He would call his victims months, sometimes years. Later, during Christmas, threatening to return to complete his mission, meaning to kill them. Most of his victims still suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder due to the terror they experienced during and after the crimes. It is said that during one of the civic meetings held at the time to discuss the East Aria Rapist case, Amon doubted that anyone would allow their wife to be, rape it in front of them and not do anything. Later, his own wife became a victim of attack and rape making her one of his victims. This implies that the criminal was present at the meeting as well. In 1979, his last years as a police officer, he was arrested for stealing a hammer and other tools from a store. The reason for his theft of these tools, which may have been used in his crimes, was not investigated. He was terminated from his job in October of that year. After his termination, the East Area Rapist vanished from the suburbs of Sacramento. After committing over 50 burglaries, many rapes, often in the presence of their children or even in the presence of their husbands, and murdering couples he happened upon in alleyways, all while working as a police officer in the burglary unit. Afterward, Joseph moved to live in Southern California, specifically Santa Barbara County, to begin the darkest chapters of his crime spree. He no longer settled for raping his victims and terrifying them, but went beyond to kill all his rape victims except for the first one. He disappeared, and his sudden disappearance coincided with the birth of his third daughter. Why did he stop? Did he suddenly feel bored? Did his conscience awaken after all the crimes he committed? Or was it related to the birth of his third daughter? All these questions have only one answer. Joseph D'Angelo, also known as the Golden State Killer, his fourth nickname. How was he apprehended? Firstly, as mentioned earlier, his crimes occurred in different areas, in different forms, and with different nicknames. It wasn't until 2001 that it was confirmed that the Vesalia Ransacker, the East Area Rapist, and the original Night Stalker were the same person. Some cases were closed due to lack of evidence, and others were revisited and further investigated at intervals. Such cases require a lot of effort, time, and money due to the oldness of the incidents and the lack of evidence. With the advent of DNA technology and the confirmation that the three criminals were one person, investigations into the case intensified in 2015 and 2016. In 2016, the FBI released additional details about some of his crimes, new composite sketches of the suspect, and announced a $50,000 reward. A national database was also created to encourage people to share any details related to the Golden State Killer. On April 18, 2018, the final step was taken to ensure 100% that the suspect was indeed the Golden State Killer. Samples of DNA from the suspect were taken from his car door and a napkin in a nearby trash can without his knowledge or consent, raising questions about the ethics of this method, taking a sample without permission. After examining the samples, their match with DNA samples related to the Golden State Killer's crimes was confirmed. Finally, he was arrested on April 24, 2018, after more than 40 years of continuous search. Thus, the curtain was drawn on one of the strangest and most complex manhunts in the history of the United States. To date, it has been confirmed. 13 counts of murder, plus 50 counts of rape, 100 counts of burglary from 1974 to 1986.